So that took a lot of courage. And I did vacillate back and forth for many nights about whether I give this very, very comfortable and for many people kind of perfect position up, especially in the realm of training. It doesn't really get much better than that. You're traveling around the world. You're on G5, G6 jets. Everything's paid for. You're making a lot of money. You got exposure, you're getting a certain degree of press, you go into premieres and meeting cool people. And actually on top of all of that, only working a couple of hours, because how often can people work out when it's two people? So it really was another sort of metamorphosis of my own character, the evolution of my own self. And I'd say very much a spiritual transition to go from something that provided security to something that could say was much more a calling, right? So I, I, one of my quotes, I say, the only form of real security is the absence of the need for external security. And even though that quote was not something that had come through me back then, I demonstrated it to myself, which is I took the leap of giving up consistent income, very comfortable income, insurance, all the things that we could want for, and started a business that didn't have any income. And again, I really say this with as much humility as I can. At this point, it doesn't matter. It's known out there so we can say who it was, but I knew I was my own Tom Cruise, right? Like I knew that I was my own version. Definitely not in acting. I suck at that. But in terms of a gift, a purpose, a, a calling and a presence that afforded me the confidence to make that leap and realize that, okay, I don't know how this shows up or how it's going to work out, but there was a degree of trust that I had in myself that call it faith in life and the universe has got my back, as I said, or just similar to that 18 year old, whatever resolve he had to call the school after being denied and plead his case. And the beauty of that story is not only did they give me a place and they made me a place, but Three years later, I got awarded the highest accolade from the college. <laughs> yeah, awarded to the most outstanding student of all round achievement. At Loughborough? At Loughborough, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you have clients lined up already or was this, was this complete leap of faith? And so yeah, how did no, you? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. I just knew yeah. that as much as, because to... Nicole's credit, she was very philosophical and she and I would have beautiful conversations. And that's when I really started to see that I had a unique perspective and going back to seven years before when I was with my friend Guy or a decade before, waxing lyrical about the meaning of life, I recognized that I could see things. And it right at the end is when I went through that sort of Saturn return, 29 to 31, yeah. that we all go through. That was that moment where the girl left me. That was sort of right at the end of that. So that was also a catalyst for me to take that leap because I saw the world now in a different way. I realized, wow, I often quote the line from Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Indiana Jones and his, his girl, just the two of them, this rough, beaten up cowboy and his girl up against the corporate machine of, in this case, the French archaeologist who's got all of his diggers and thousands of slaves digging in, looking for the covenant, the ark. And he, once he discovers through that light gem and the light comes through and it shows on that map on the ground, right, where it is. And he comes up and he's like, they're digging in the wrong place. And so I use that quote and I love it because I see that in humanity. Everyone's digging in the wrong place. And everyone is obviously a bold statement, not everyone, but the majority of people are digging in the wrong place. And what does that mean? They want to acquire more money. They maybe want to get a bit of status. They want to get the bigger home. They want to get the perfect partner, the perfect body. And there's sort of this one day phenomenon. And to me, that's very much a linear progression, which is appropriate and by all means pursue it. But if you're not playing the spiritual evolution game, you're digging in the wrong place. Hmm. And to me, that is a much more a linear track, right? It's how can I shift to a different frequency? Because that is the precursor to manifesting things on the material world. It's not staying at a frequency of inadequacy. I'm not loved. I'm not wanted. I'm not safe. Where there's this sort of inadequacy that's driving this fear to compensate in the outside world. That's exhausting and why people are suffering and in a state of disease. And so for me, it's like when we transcend that and we step into our true divine essence, and realize our worth, our abundance, our feeling of true love that is ours, not because of someone, then that becomes the precursor to all of those things starting to show up effortlessly around us. So 
um, yeah, so that leap was very much that shift from seeking for the outside world to validate me, to me finding internal validation and allowing that to be the preemptive energy and frequency to a world that would reflect that. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever wanna see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.